Eliza, mm -hmm. welcome to Dubai. Are Thank you sure. loving the weather here? I am loving the weather here. The <laughs> winter in Dubai is warmer than the summer in Iceland. Yes. Well, uh, in fact, this is the coolest we can go down to. It's been a little windy since yesterday and we're really enjoying this weather because we don't get enough. <laughs> And you see, it's just like home for me with this level of wind, yeah. and, but warmer, a lot but warmer. warmer. Of course, a lot warmer than <laughs> Iceland, I'm very sure. So Eliza, you co-founded the Iceland Writers Retreat. What motivated you to start this event and what do you hope to gain from it? Well, a friend of mine and I started it 10 years ago now, and it was really an event that we wanted to attend for people who love to write, whatever place you are in your writing journey, yeah. to go to a country like Iceland, where the capital city is a UNESCO city of literature. Everybody loves writers. We have a strong storytelling tradition, just like here in the UAE. Yeah. And uh, we thought a great place that people from around the world can meet yeah. and, and share this craft of writing and meet different writers and, and improve their own writing skills. And we have a lot of fun with it. We do it every year in April. How amazing. But also being the first lady of Iceland, you have promoted so many causes such as uh, entrepreneurship, sustainability, gender yeah. equality. Yeah. How do you balance your personal interests along with, you know, a role like this being mm -hmm. a public figure? Well, you know, you're right. And my husband is the president of the country and it's a, it's a very long story, but he became president in 2016 and it was the first time he'd ever run for public office. So we were sort of thrust onto the national stage very, very quickly. And I, at first I was a bit nervous about that yeah. because I thought, you know, what am I allowed to do? And am I supposed to do something? And, and there's no rule book for being a first lady. But instead of getting scared by the fact that there's no rule book, I decided I would try to just use that, that I thought, if there's no rule book, I, I can do whatever. Rules. Yeah, I can do whatever I want. I'm not breaking any rules. Yeah. So, so I just thought I'm going to try to use this platform to talk about issues that that I am passionate about, and that includes gender equality, which I wrote a book about, and uh, sort of women's empowerment. But it also includes literature, literary heritage. I'm an immigrant to Iceland because I grew up in Canada, so I try to talk about multiculturalism and diversity and immigration, and and it's such an an honor and a privilege. I'm I, I feel so fortunate so amazing. I was seeing uh, the book that you have here at the yeah. Litfest as well, uh, Secrets of the Spracker. You've yeah. written about the extraordinary women of uh, Iceland. That's right. Yeah. Um, Spracker is an Icelandic word. It means extraordinary women. Yeah. And uh, Iceland is closest in the world, according to the World Economic Forum, to closing the gender gap. Yeah. So I wanted to really, it's, it's really just a love letter to Iceland mm -hmm. told through the eyes of its women. And, and it, it incorporates my own story as an immigrant to the country who became first lady, but it, it profiles the stories of about 40 different women who are regular women, because I thought that makes it connect to all of us around the world, you know, that we can learn something about this other country that seems distant or exotic or unusual, but yeah. also see what draws us together and see how sort of inspire us that we're all role models and somehow yeah. we all have a story that we can tell. How cool. And now you have forayed into fiction writing yeah. as well. You have an upcoming novel, Death of a Diplomat. Yeah. Tell us more about it. Yeah, so it's, 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 my, it's my news here at Emirates because it's a new book coming out next year called Death of a Diplomat. And, and after writing nonfiction, I thought, oh, I'm going to give myself a challenge and try to write fiction, which yeah. is much harder because you have to make everything up. So, uh, of course, it takes place in Iceland. Yeah. Uh, it involves a diplomat who dies. Um, but I, I hope that it's a sort of interesting kind of classic style murder mystery set in mm -hmm. an exotic location. I love those. I'm definitely going to give it a read. Great. Can't wait for it to come out. Thank you. Maybe I get to come back to Dubai and promote that book when it comes out. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be so happy to have you back here. Thank you. Semi, what would be your tips or some kind of guidance that you would want to give out to young writers out there? Well, you know, the one thing that kind of kept me going when I started my fiction writing um, was, and it maybe sounds strange, or unusual, but you have to you know, write the whole book before you yes. can sell it. And you don't know if anyone's gonna wanna read it. And I thought the only, I can guarantee 100%, no one will publish this book if I don't write it. Yes. And it's strange, but it kind of kept me motivating. You know, there's, you're, a hun you're guaranteed to fail if you don't even try. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've actually met authors here who mm -hmm. wrote their first book and nobody was ready to publish it. Mm -hmm. And then they ended up publishing it themselves. Yes. And then it's, it became a bestseller. Exactly. So, uh, and you believe in yourself. And if you have a good network around you as well, I, I always like having people who, 
who I trust, who will tell me what I'm doing well and where I can improve. And, and that really helps as well. You really need to give it a shot and take that challenge up yeah. and just go out there and do it. That's right. It feels so good when you, even if you, if it's not quite how you want it, you've done it and you've tried. Absolutely. It's a great I take feeling. That, I take that as a tip in, I think, in every field in mine as well. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I'm sure our viewers will take it uh, and follow it in their respective fields. Too. I hope so. And that's the secret, you know, I, my first book called Secrets of a Yeah. It's an Icelandic mm -hmm. word, but it's not a uniquely Icelandic concept. Yeah. There are outstanding women everywhere, everywhere in the world. Yeah. So, Alison, why don't you read out one of your most favorite lines from the book? Oh, thank you. It's about the women that I interviewed for this book here. And I say, whether first lady, sheep farmer, immigrant, soccer star, comedian, mayor, or sex advisor, we're all Icelanders sharing our stories and insights about what makes this land so equal for so many. And we're revealing the secrets about how we can nurture, support, and elevate the sprakar, the outstanding women who live within us and in our communities so we can all do our part to achieve gender equality no matter where we live. That is so amazing. <laughs> They love you. it. Okay, well, thank you so much, Eliza. It's been wonderful talking to you. My Enjoy pleasure. your stay in Dubai. Thank you for having <laughs> me on the program. Thank you.